Cyprian's father is back to normal health. That's the power of prayer. Amen? Amen. Let's offer a thanksgiving prayer. Father, we are so glad to hear that the Cyprian senior is now touched and restored. I was told that he was in the house, he felt dizzy and was rushed to the hospital while his son and daughter-in-law were sharing and lifting your name. I know the devil tried to weaken their faith, but greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. We give God the glory. Bless us, Lord, as we now inch towards the climax of this hunger for God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask all of you to look at this bottle. How, how does it look? How does it look for all of you? Beg your pardon? Okay, this is Vital Life exclusively for women. We have specially got this just to give the women. And you will see here that it is 100 ml. So let's try to open this. These are the real vitamins. Let me try to open this a little bit more. And every woman needs to take one every day. Let me try to open this a little bit. Yes. You have 100 promises for women inside. Praise God. There is good news. Every woman who attended this meeting will get it as a free gift. Amen. Amen. Husband, please don't feel jealous. <laughs> In order for you to acquire, we were able to get only eight bottles today. You will get it exactly in 12 days. But in order for you to acquire, kindly register your names at the end. I hope you have all written. If you have not written, this is an amazing. I want all of you women to take every day one. You will not believe this kind of vitamins, what it can do to your soul. And you will be very amazed to know how it, how it works. There are also ingredients mentioned here. The Lord will fight for you. Exodus 14, 4, 20 milligram. <laughs> Rejoice and be glad. Matthew 5, 12, 17 milligram. Be submissive. That is another wonderful milligram. <laughs> Walk in the light. Stand firm. Preserve my life. The joy of the Lord. Don't give up. Refuge. Vital life for women. That's what prayer does. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask one representative from each church. I'm going to give it as a gift right now. Uh, who wants to get up from Pasai Church and come here? One woman. Send your woman representative quickly. Pasai Church. If you don't come, I will give it to my wife. Uh -huh. <laughs> Shall we all give her a hand? Praise God. God bless you. Take it. Take it. That's my G Church. That's my G Church. Come forward. Come forward quickly. Praise God. This is vital life. God bless you. God bless you. IS Church. Anybody here from IS? Come. Ma'am Carrie Beats, you can come here. 100% pure word of God. Thank you so much. Anybody else from any other church? I would like to know. Mamsi, please come. Rufina, how can I forget? Anybody else? What church? Please come. Please come. God bless. God bless. Make sure all of you women, all of you will get. I just spoke to someone and I got a sponsor. Praise God for that. Amen. Anybody else from any other church? Yes. What church? Please come. Muzon. We cater to people from Luzon to Muzon. No problem. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? I don't want to neglect. Yes. Please come. 
I am afraid whether I will run out of vitamins. God bless. Share, share it with your church, with your family. God bless. God bless you, ma'am. Please make sure you attend our next meeting also. Anybody else? Have I neglected anybody? Have I neglected anybody? What one? Oh, man, how can I forget that? Okay, I'm going to ask one, one. Yes. Do you really have your membership here? Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. God bless. We're going to just bring it to a climax. This is called praying God-sized prayers. But before that, I'm going to invite Smyrna to sing for us. This is an anointed woman. You know, I've heard many people sing, but there is a difference between talent and being anointed. Come on, my friend. Let's listen to this anointed lady. God bless you. This is my brother Andre. He's going to sing with me. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than have. I'd rather be led by his nailed, pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sins, drawn Jesus. 
requested two ladies to share three minutes each. This will be our last session of testimony before we get into our final punch of the climax of praying God-sized prayers. I want to invite my good friend Nese, followed by Marisol. Both of them will just take three minutes each to glorify God. Thank you. Uh, nice to meet you. My name is Nancy. I'm from Brazil. I have the honor and the privilege to study in AUP. I'm studying PhD in commerce. And I would like to share another meaning for PhD. is pray hard daily. It's very important to pray all the time. And uh, I would like to share uh, an experience that I have few days ago, uh, I, I start having a stomach ache, but it was a very uh, strong stomach ache, and I need to go to the hospital. So I call a friend, we went to Southern Luzon Hospital near here, I went to the emergency room, and uh, a doctor told me that I uh, need to have some injections. So I, they gave me two injections, but I still was in pain. So I start praying, praying, and I asked to my friend to ask to other friends to pray also. And it was necessary a third injection, so the, finally the pain was relieved. And uh, after that, I should uh, overnight stay during the night in the hospital, but it's too expensive. So I asked the doctor uh, I, I could, if I could come to AUP and then go back the, other mo the next day. So I did that. Uh, I returned in the morning for uh, more exams. So I did some exams. And after I have another, I went to Manila for a consultation. And then I come back uh, for another consultation. But I praise the Lord because uh, thanks to the prayers of my friends, uh, everything was very smooth and I don't feel pain anymore and I could see the presence and the guidance of God in every step. God sent angels, then, then God sent many kind, extremely kind doctors and I praise God for, because he answered the prayers of my friends. And I would like to uh, invite you to pray for, for others. Pray for your friends because it's very important and God answered prayers. So please pray because the uh, answer will come. Pray because there is abundant help. Pray because angels will be sent. Pray because there is help for every emergency. Please pray for others. Pray always because our God is good. Our God is love. Our God is powerful and our God is victorious. Amen. Good evening, everyone. 
it is, I find this a, a high privilege to be standing in front of you. Coming inside, I checked the program right away and I saw that my name is listed under those who will be testifying about answers to God-sized prayers. You know what immediately I thought? God-sized prayers? What prayers have I prayed that are God-sized? And have God answered, have God answered them? Believe me, I, when I think about God-sized prayers, I'm thinking about like George Mueller of old, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's most well known for building orphanages, running orphanages for years, raising orphans, children without homes, only depending on prayer. Can you imagine that? Buying land, building an orphanage, and th these are several buildings, and then feeding these young people. These are God-sized prayers. And it's like, it's almost embarrassing that I was asked to share a testimony about, you know, praying a God-sized prayer. But I believe that the Lord will not embarrass himself. <laughs> Immediately, he impressed upon me something. I don't know if you've heard of this quote. It says, there is a God-shaped hole in the heart of every man that cannot be filled by any created thing except by God the Creator. And that is what immediately came to me and I smiled to my friend, yes, God has a testimony to share today through me, I believe. And I pray that it will be delivered. And so, it is really amazing how that God-shaped hole in our hearts can only be filled by God. And uh, amazingly enough, that is not answered directly. God does not... I never prayed that God will fill that God-shaped hole in my heart because in the first place, I didn't know about it anyway. He had to use, he had to do some processes in my life so that I will realize that there is a gaping hole in my heart which is, you know, shouting for God to fill. And he has to start with, with making me realize my sinfulness. I didn't know that I was sinful. Believe me, if you are raised, if you're raised in an Adventist home and your parents did their very best conscientiously to raise you, somehow you grow up thinking that you're you're quite okay. You know, you're you're better than others. In fact, that was me. Believe me, there are sermons where I will be sitting in the congregation and I'll be thinking. I was still young then. I'll be thinking, oh, I wish so and so were here so that he or she will hear that sermon so that they will be moved. Can you imagine that kind of hypocrisy, that kind of spiritual arrogance? That was me. And the Lord had to humble me to the ground, to the dust, so that I will realize that I am the one in most need of His grace. And that's why when we sing songs like Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim It, Amazing Grace, and that song that we just sang a while ago, I forgot. Uh, what is that song, beautiful song? Yeah, the, the fountain. Fountain, what is that? Ay, ay, ay. I know you understand what I'm saying. When you, when you don't realize that you're a sinner, you will never be appreciate something like that. When you do not realize that you're blind, you will never be able to appreciate sight. When you do not realize that you're lost, you will never appreciate the fact that you are saved. And I praise God for the spiritual influences He placed on my life. When I was still very young, my mother told me that there is a teacher who taught me a very simple song. It's in Ilocano, but if you translate it in English, it, it simply says, Lord, I am but a small child. I am very, very helpless. Teach me how to pray so that I will learn how to follow you. And I believe that that, that prayer that I prayed senselessly because I was still a kid, the Lord faithfully answered that. I remember the first time I sang in front, it was with my mother. I was still very young, and the song was to be like Jesus. And so, I, looking back, I remember that, the, that it's like throughout my life, my desire had been to be like Jesus. My desire had been to be like Jesus. But God had to start with making me realize how much I am not like Jesus. He had to, he had, he had to take care of that business first. And so he, he eventually showed to me that, you know, my, 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 my desire to pursue other things is simply that God-shaped hole in my heart clamoring for the presence of Jesus in my life. And I was only given three minutes. I'm sure I'm over that already. 
But I believe that all, all of us, we have this experience. The Lord is in the process of feeling that emptiness, that God-shaped hole in our hearts. If only we would recognize it all the time. He is in the process. We are all works in progress, like Dr. Sebrian said a while ago. And yes, that's true. God's will for us is our sanctification in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3. He is at work to sanctify us, to transform us, to be more and more like Jesus. And it's really, really amazing. I have no time to, to read the quote by Mrs. White. It's really, really beautiful, but I believe that I have already exhausted my time. And I believe also that the message has been spoken. But one last verse I will be sharing with you. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 12. No, no, no. 1 John 5 verse 12. He who hath the Son hath life. He who hath not the Son hath not life. And I praise God for His mercy. Because of Him, I now have life. Looking back when I did not realize who I really was and who God was, I did not have life. I did not have true life. Now, although I'm still a work in progress, I know that I now have life in Him. And all the joy, all the beauty of walking with Jesus, all the, the peace, the freedom of, you know, of surrendering self to him and everything. My time is gone. Thank you so much for listening. May God be praised. We are here to wrap up our final session and I'd want all of you to kindly listen to the word of God. Father in heaven, we want to pray God-sized prayers. You've taken us through prayer surgery. You've taken us through prayer graph. Will you please take us through God-sized prayer? In Jesus' name, amen. I finished my studies, masters. I was happy that I was going to become a pastor. The first year of my pastoral duty, one whole year had passed. I have not baptized even one soul. I used to preach very, very sincerely from my heart. I used to spend a lot of time preparing. So my conference called me, the leadership said, you are the only guy that has not baptized even one. I wanted to tell him, what about Noah? <laughs> <laughs> it was so embarrassing for me. I felt deeply humiliated. I went home depressed, but the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Don't depend on your knowledge. Depend on me. I want to tell you, my friends, God told me, put your Hebrew, your Greek, your English university, your master's, everything you need to ask me about. Take all my Hebrew and your Greek. And don't say that, God will be able to ask us a choice to be my own. Just like that, take all my Hebrew and your Greek. Just beginning to preach, one demon-possessed woman stood up. In India, you will come across many demon-possessed women. And she said, hey, who are you guys? With whose permission did you come to my village? Are you trying to chase me? All of us were pastors. And the woman stayed. She was devil-possessed. She stayed with red eyes right into my eyes. I had fever for three days. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. All the villagers, Hindus, told us, you chase the demon from this woman, we will believe that your God is a true God. 
They said this woman was highly uneducated. She was illiterate. But the way she spoke in English, they were shocked. What language is this? They said this woman has never been to school. She spoke in perfect English. And she was scolding me. God taught me that for you to be a minister, I don't want you to learn Hebrew and Greek only. You need to fast and pray. So we decided, I told all the guys, I don't think we are ready to chase the devil. Let's ask for some time to these villages. Please listen carefully, my friends. We told the people, it's already getting late now and we want all of you to go home. Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, we want all of you to come. We went, all the pastors, we came for an evangelistic meeting. Every day we were eating four times, five times. He said, let us all fast and pray. We fasted and prayed. <clears throat> Next day we came, the whole village gathered around us. It's a true story. And this woman came again, staring, red eyes, pop eyes. We prayed one hour, two hours, three hours, it will not go. Everybody, they said, let's all confess our sins. After five hours, the devil finally left that woman. She was the first person to be baptized. In that village, we had 16 converts, a 100% staunch, ultra-orthodox, conservative Hindus. By God's grace, the Lord chased the devils. I'm saying this. God-sized prayers. The very first time I was invited to London, I was scared to death. Lord, I'm an Indian. I can't speak English like them. You know how the English speak English. That is English. <laughs> I speak from India English. I said, Lord, it is very scary. I've never preached in London. Why did you bring me? And so the pastor came to the airport and he said, it's a huge evangelistic meeting. It was for 25 days. The pastor said, come to the divine service. The church was packed, 256 people plus. The hall was overflowing. God helped me to preach a good sermon. He said, let us see this evening how the people will come. Usually people don't come in the evening. Evening, 200 plus came. The pastor said, no, it is because of Sabbath they came. Let's see the real attendance tomorrow. Sunday, I went to the room. I knelt down. I pleaded to God. I opened my house, the, the, the windows in my house where I stayed. Lord, you cannot let me down. Please, I beg you. Sunday, 230 people came. And then the pastor told me, no, because it is holiday, people came. I said, this man has no good words to tell me. <laughs> so Monday, he said, the real attendance will show. Monday, 220 people showed up. He said, since today is the first working day, people came. I said, what kind of a pastor is this man? 25 days, God had to humble me, knelt down, knelt down. Throughout 25 days, the hall was overflowing. Amen. What do you think was the secret? Sometimes it's good to be humbled. If you want to be humbled, you have to take God-sized tasks. It's only then God will give you God-sized answers, provided you're willing to pray God-sized prayers. We came to the fag end. I gave an appeal for baptism. Only two people were baptized, only two. You know I'm from India. We baptize thousands. I was so down and so depressed. The whole church was, was celebrating in jubilation. Praise God, we have two baptisms. I said, what's happening to you guys? <laughs> two baptisms? They say, to get one soul in five years is a big challenge. They were so happy, they said, Pastor, can you come next year? 
I want to tell you, I've been to the UK seven times, all because I believe in a God-sized prayers. This evening, you cannot leave this place without putting your trust in God-sized prayers. Let's very quickly go and look at what God has to tell. This is exactly what the Lord wants us to do. Leviticus 16, 29, He shall afflict your souls. I was invited to a very, very tough country in Europe. It had just broken from a Russian regime, you know, communism. I landed in Russia. They took me to this place. Communism had just fallen. This happened about four years ago. God told, you have to preach the word. I landed in this country. I cannot speak one bit of their language. They cannot speak one word of English, not one word. I landed, man, I looked at everyone. They were so beautiful. They just looked like strawberry, you know. I was the only one who looked like blackberry, you know. <laughs> amazing, amazing people, how they looked. Amazing. One woman came, interpreter, hardly to get 20 people in Europe is a challenge. You cannot get 20 people. I went to the room. What do you do? You are humbled because it's a God-sized task. Afflict your soul. I said, Lord, don't let me down. This is all about you. I humble myself. Lord, you've destroy me. Destroy me. Completely finish me off that only your glory will be revealed. They were not sure whether even 20 or 30 will come. I say this only to the glory of God. In Europe, in this country called Latvia, 360 people showed up. I want to tell you, my friends, I have just returned from Latvia. I go there every time, all the time. Every time we have meetings, by the grace of God, 300, 400, 500 show up. Amen? God is finishing his work. This woman came to me. She just watched me on YouTube, sent me a ticket. All my tickets are through YouTube. She told me a testimony I will never forget. Let me read the next line for you. There are two observations. He shall seek me and find me when he shall search for me with all your heart. Why is it most of our prayers are not answered? We don't search. We don't seek. And even if you seek, you don't seek and search with all your heart. God-sized prayers are those you seek God who is really big. Ask for the impossible. I want to share two testimonies as I look at this major observations. Obser observation number one. Fasting is an expression of of wholeheartedness. You've got to come and resign. You have to tell, Lord, I'm sorry, I resign. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. I want you to look at the second observation. We are going to offer God-sized prayer. Fasting is an expression of readiness. Friends, be ready. What you thought to be impossible, what you thought to be not achievable right after this prayer meeting, maybe this week, this month, God will do the impossible in your life. You can trust me. Amen? Have God-sized faith. Have God-sized gigantic trust and confidence. Do you have an expression of wholeheartedness? This woman who called me shared a testimony. Her grandfather is from Russia, very dedicated Adventist. Communism destroyed Adventism. We're talking about 60s all the way to 91. You know when the Iron Curtain fell in Russia. No more it is USSR. No more Socialist Republic. This grandfather 
was an Adventist who read the Bible and kept the Bible Sabbath. But the Russians told him to recant Adventism. He said, no. Do you know what did they do? They took all the Adventists, put them in a train, a goods train. They deported them to Siberia. Do you know what is the climate in Siberia? This woman told me the story and I stayed in her house. I listened to her story till 2 o'clock. I had tears in my eyes. Do you know, friends, what it cost to our pioneers to bring this faith Adventism to us? You and I are sitting in an AC hall under this amazing roof. No problem. No inconvenience. God is super amazing in such a way. When these guys went there, they had to hide the Bible. They had only a New Testament. And there the officers called them and said, work. They said, we are Adventists, we will not. They were beaten back black and blue. Beaten. Many people died there in Siberia, I understand. The woman who invited me told, some of them remained so faithful, they started writing letters from the prison in Siberia all the way to Latvia. Today, you have more than 1,000 Adventists in that country. Amen? God is amazing. I want you to look at the next one before we offer our last and final prayer. This is my very favorite, Dr. Jim's favorite text. Then I proclaimed a fast there of the river of Ahava that we might afflict. Do you know why is it many of our prayers are not answered? Let me be very honest. Simply because we are proud. If there is one thing you have to learn this evening, let us not be proud anymore. Afflicting ourselves before our God to seek of Him a right way for us, our little ones, and for our substance. These are the three prayers, God's size prayers we are going to offer. Number one, you are going to seek God for a right way for you. Amen? Let's afflict. Number two, we're going to pray for our children. Many of, many times, we don't pray prayers for our children. Right now, we're going to pray for our children. Finally, you're also going to pray for your substance. You're going to pray for whatever you want. You want a house? Don't hesitate. Ask God for a house. Do you want a job? Ask God. Do you want to finish your education? Ask God. Whatever is your substance. So we fasted and besought our God for this. And he was entreated for this. Before we enter into this last and final prayer session, I want to bring to you some observations, please. This, in this passage, you will find the following observations. You got to put your full trust in the Lord as his people. Just pray as if there is no other way, there is no other resource, no other means except to pray. Put your full trust. That's a God-sized prayer. <clears throat> Number two, full submission to the Lord's will. First is full trust, and now we pray, not my will, Lord. We're going to have full submission to the Lord's will. That takes us to the next level. Amazing. Intensified prayer life and commitment to prayer. You cannot have an ordinary prayer. You have to be in the ICU. Intensive prayer care. Look here, my friends. Bible says they spoke to God, seeking Him, seeking for God's guidance for the children, then for the substance. The whole life was committed to God. Let me take you to two more levels before we sing this. Strong bond of unity. As we are going to pray right now, the last prayer is going to be a prayer of 
unity. I want us to be united right now. As I bring my last statement before we pray, let's go there. Believe in the awesome power of God. I was married. After two, three months, I heard that my wife was carrying. I was going to be a father in a matter of six months. I was very happy and excited. You do not know how happy I was. I went to conduct a week of prayer. And before I could come, we lost our first conception. It was very difficult for, for me to digest this. Second year, my wife conceived again by the grace of God. We lost our second conception. Third year, my wife conceived and we lost our third conception. Actually, we went into a very big trauma, psychologically and emotionally. And for the next two years, my wife could not conceive. My wife is a nurse. We went to consult a doctor. And the doctor said, we want you to take an injection for the next six months, continuously. I told my wife, are you willing to do that? She says, no. And then the doctor said, sometimes in life you have to learn to accept the reality. You will not conceive medically. Three times we have lost. And I was a pastor. I was going around and praying for many people. It was so embarrassing that I myself did not have a child. Every time we had a Father's Day, I would be so embarrassed. I will walk out of the church because they used to make all the fathers stand up and give roses. I was, I was very hurt to the core. One day I called my wife and the Spirit of God spoke to me. I just took a glass of water. We knelt down and we confessed our sins and we humbled ourselves. And I gave this glass of water to my wife to drink. In Jesus' name, Lord, forgive us. That very same month she conceived. I don't have to tell you the rest of the story. This evening, you all know it. I don't know where my children. I am the father of two most beautiful girls. Don't underestimate their beauty by looking at my face, okay? <laughs> they, got, they got the mother's looks. What are your defects? God will move the mountain in your life. He will destroy your enemy and the Egyptian whom you have been under, whom you have feared, you will see that Egyptian no more. God will give victory. If there is one thing we need to pray, we need to pray for God. God to do the impossible. Right now, we are going to offer three prayers quickly. Let's all kneel down right now. The first prayer is, I want all of you to look. I want all of you to pray, Lord, I am afflicting myself. I want to humble myself. Let us submit our pride. Let us submit our self and ego and say, Lord, destroy me. Ask God to destroy you that you will be afflicted. Two minutes of afflicting yourself.
one more minute, one minute more. I would like to offer the second prayer. Heavenly Father, now that we have afflicted ourselves, we have fasted, next we are seeking God. Many times we have never sought you, God. We thought we could manage our own lives. We thought we could just maneuver and manipulate. We thought our jobs will give us security. The bank account is our guarantee. We thought our talent, our disposition, our status, our role, our call, our education, it will sustain us. Thank you, Lord. Some of us have never sought you this evening as a small group in Finster Hall. In AUP, we seek God. We want God to be our God. We want God to be our compassionate Redeemer. We want God and God alone to be our answer. Please, Lord, I beg of you, as we seek you, do not let us down. In a special way, I want to pray as the minister of your gospel. I humble myself. I humble myself before your throne. I want to pray for these people. I do not know what they are seeking for. If they are seeking for peace, give them, Lord. If they are seeking for joy, give them, Lord. If they are seeking for success, give them, Lord. If they are seeking for any unspoken secretive prayer request, grant the desire of their heart, Lord. They have come here. They have spent five hours in fasting and prayer, we have been seeking you. Lord, please be far. We are seeking you with all our heart, mind, and soul. Be thou gracious and merciful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to offer the second last prayer. I want all of you to pray for your children, particularly. If you do not have a children, if you are not married, Pray for any children in your family. Pray exclusively for children. Let's all pray for the next two minutes. In Jesus' name, Amen. Here we are to offer the last prayer and our program. Shall we all stand, please? And I want all of you to gather. We are all going to gather in a circle. 
go beyond the chase. Don't be in between. Let's all gather. We are going to gather in a circle. And all of us are going to hold hands with each other. Come. We are going to seek God. Everybody. Everybody form a circle. I would want all of you to come. I would want all of you to come. Will you please come? I would want all of you. Let us go the Bible way. Let's go the Bible way. Let's go the Bible way. Your life and my life will never ever be the same. Seek God. Thank you, Lord. Afflict your soul. Thank you, Lord. Pray for a little once. This evening, we are going to pray our last prayer. And the last prayer will be to bring the fire of God, the Holy Spirit, in our church. To experience revival and reformation. That our life, our family, our church will never be the same. As we are clasping our hands with each other, I want you to look up to heaven. Just pray to the God of heaven for the next two minutes. After that, I will offer the closing prayer. Gracious and kind, loving Father in heaven. We have done exactly what you have asked us to do. We have fasted. We have prayed. We focused on God. We've confessed our sins. We wanted to be washed by your blood. We wanted to be rubbed by the salt. We wanted to be clothed by the righteousness of Jesus. We underwent a prayer surgery in which the Lord literally removed the cancer of sin. And he washed me thoroughly by his blood. You showed us the prayer graph so that it helped us to see where we are. I thank you for the Spirit of God who moved in this precious people whom you have got. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray humbly but boldly, claiming the blood of Jesus. Forgive me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. Cleanse me. I want to pray that right now you break all the evil powers in their lives. The devil has to leave them right now. Enough of the torture. Enough of financial curses, Lord. Enough of the sickness, enough of this emotional and psychological terror and trauma. In Jesus' name, leave them right now. We claim the power and authority of the blood of Jesus. Lord, reign your Holy Spirit. May you reign the righteousness. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, Lord. All the days of their life, let no man be able to stand against them. Heal our sin sick bodies. Put your stripes on us, Lord. With your stripes, we are healed. Touch our business. Touch our professions, Lord. We want to be instruments of witnessing. Touch our finance, Lord. Prosper them. Touch our studies. Touch our education. Touch the students. 
touch every life here, Lord. And I pray as we walk out of this hall, may we never be the same. Break us, afflict us. And as we seek you, I pray right now that you remove all the burdens, all the burdens. May Jesus be lifted. May the cross be magnified. May Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God alone reside in our hearts. Help us to be God-focused. Help us to look forward for your coming. Help us to be revived and be reformed. Help us to be instruments of your peace. In Jesus' name, as we humbly pray, all of God's people say, Amen. Shake hands with your nearest neighbor right and left. God bless. Let's all go back to your seat. There is a small snack that has to be distributed. Enjoy your life. Enjoy life. Enjoy abundant life. Enjoy eternal life. To God be the glory.